Hello and welcome to another Every Tuesday tutorial. In this week's tutorial, we will be creating a flat style iMac icon all in Adobe Illustrator from scratch. So I've gotten a few requests lately for flat style illustrations. So this week, what you see on screen is the exact outcome of what we're going to be creating together. So I have my keystrokes enabled, so you will be able to see all of my keystrokes throughout this entire thing. So if I don't mention anything, it's still available to you on screen. So I'm just gonna hop right in and we'll get started. So I'm just gonna grab this color palette that we'll be using for our tutorial. I'm gonna come in here. This document is size 512 pixels by 512 pixels, which is a common size for web icons. Um, so you can still scale it up or scale it down, whatever you need to, because vectors are infinitely rescalable. So we'll hop into all of this and you'll be able to re use this at any size that you may need in the future. So I'm going to paste in this color palette and I'll give you all of these different colors so you can take them down as well. So I've got my color palette open over here and I'm just going to go over each one so you can see them. So this is a darker yellow color. This is the yellow, the blue, the black, the very lightest gray, gray number two, number three, number four, and this is the darkest gray that we have. Okay, so what I do when I'm creating a flat style illustration is I find a source image of what I'm kind of going for. So because we are recreating an iMac look, all I did was hop online and I just Google image searched iMac. I saw this one, so I pulled this one in here. So I'm just gonna click and drag it into my document and it'll pop open in here. And then I just scaled it down to the size that I needed. Um, so I'm going to scale this a little, a little bit smaller. And then obviously we can always scale as much as we need later on. So the next thing I did was after I have this in my document, I'm going to put it on its own layer so I'm not accidentally moving it while I'm working off of it as a template. So if I come over here into my layers palette, right now I have my color builds right here on their own layer and I also have this iMac image now on the same layer. So I need to separate these two so I can still access my colors but not touch this iMac image. So I'm going to create a new layer and I'm just going, when this is selected, when you see this little blue square right here or whatever layer color it is, you can see this layer color is blue so it's going to be a blue square. All I have to do is click and drag this up and that will pull this onto its own new layer. And I'm actually going to use this as the bottom layer so I'm just going to click and drag this below this layer so now you can see these are my colors on their own layer and here's the iMac on its own layer. So I'm just going to lock this layer so now I can't move it anywhere and it's just going to stay put. I've got my colors on their own layer and now I'm going to create a new layer right here that's kind of sandwiched in between these two and this is going to be my main artwork layer. So I'm going to create this entire icon on its own layer. So I'm just going to label this icon. Okay, so now we can begin. And what I like to do is get my base shape figured out first and then I add in all the details afterwards. You can see on here, I totally made up whatever it is on the screen. I'm kind of imitating the look in Illustrator, which you can see with different palettes on the right side, the main workspace in the middle, and then my toolbox over here. So I'm going to come back over here and what I need right now is a rounded rectangle because I've got rounded edges right here. So I'm going to grab my rectangle tool over here, my rounded rectangle tool, and I'm just going to drag out a rectangle that is this entire size right here. And you can see my curvature is a little tighter than I need it to be. So I can increase the size of my rounded rectangle as long as I still have it pulled out like this and still selected. If I hit my up arrow, I can increase the size of that roundness or I can decrease, if I hit arrow down, decrease the size so it becomes a sharper corner. So I need this to be a softer corner. So I'm gonna increase it a little bit until it feels pretty pretty spot on and that's looking good. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is just change this into a stroke instead of a fill so I can see everything else that's going on. So next I'm just going to grab my regular rectangle, so I just hit M on my keyboard, and I need this portion to be separate from the rest of it. So right where this line is, I'm just going to draw out a rectangle, and now I'm going to select both of these 
hop over to my Pathfinder palette. You can get to your Pathfinder by going Window, Pathfinder, and I'm just going to divide them. So hit this icon, and then I need to ungroup them. So Command Shift G or Control Shift G on a PC, and then I can just select this extra piece that I don't need, delete that, and now I've got these two separate shapes. Um, if I turn off my iMac layer, you can see I've got two separate shapes now exactly the way that I need them. So now I can color this one the color that I want it. So I'm going to color this one this second lightest color gray. And now I know that I need a window in here. So this part's going to be black. I already know that. But I'm going to input this little window right here. So I'm just going to grab uh, my rectangle by hitting M on my keyboard. And I'm just going to draw out my rectangle. And I'm going to color this this lighter yellow. And now I can color this part black right here. So now we're in really good shape, and if I turn off my iMac, you can see it's already starting to come together. So now I'm going to create this base. So I need it just a little bit darker than this part, so you can tell it's kind of sitting behind the main monitor area. So I'm going to hit M on my keyboard once again. I'm going to draw out a rectangle. And next, I know I need to move this corner so I get more of an angle right here. So I'm going to hit A on my keyboard, and I can just select this one anchor point right here and start dragging it over. I can hold Shift to make sure it stays straight. And let me zoom in here so we can see things a little closer up. I'm going to click, and as I'm dragging, I'm going to hold Shift until I somewhat match that angle that I've got going on there. Same thing over here. As I'm dragging, I'm going to hold Shift and match that angle. And now I'm going to color this this darker gray, so this middle gray right here. And there's a lot of extra curvature right here, but we're going to keep this nice and simple. So we're just going to create a nice slim rectangle for this base right here. So bring it all the way there, and this one's just going to be a little bit darker. And that's looking good. And now we can actually turn off our iMac and keep it turned off the rest of the way here. So I like putting in a little extra shadow just to simulate a little bit of depth right here. So in order to do that, I just grab my pen tool. So I'm going to hit P on my keyboard. I'm going to click on this corner and then just make a slight angle right there and then match up with my other anchor points and close it right here. And I'm going to make this the darkest gray because it's a shadow and it's simulating depth. So that's looking really good. And I know I need a little circle right here. This could be your Apple um, logo right here, but I'm just going to create a circle for now. So I'm going to grab my ellipse tool, hold shift, click and drag out a small circle. Um, and then I'm going to color this just a little bit darker than this. Actually, I'm going to grab the middle gray right there. That seems a little too light. Let's grab that one. All right. So now I just need to center this right in here. So if I select both of these and then just click on this larger one one more time, this position will be based off of this larger shape right here. So I'm going to horizontal align center it and then evenly vertically distribute it. So that's looking really good and we're all set right there. And now you can just drop in any kind of illustration that you'd like on the screen. I am going to put a small shadow up here on the top just to make it look like it is on screen and not just sitting super flat on top. So I'm going to color this this darker yellow color. And now I can create um, my palette over here. You can see I'm just kind of mimicking what Illustrator looks like. So in order to do this super fast, I'm just going to hit M, create a square. I'm going to color it this blue color. And I'm going to hold Alt, click, and drag, and then hold Shift as I I'm dragging to keep it perfectly straight and I've got two right here and I think I want to have I don't know six all together so I need four in between so I'm just gonna grab my blend tool so I'm gonna double click specified steps I know I need four in between hit OK select this one select this one and now I've got those and then I can just alt click and drag to make a copy and just like that I've got my little toolbox super simple look right there and now let me move these down a little bit and now I can create my main window so this is just drawing out some rectangles
So that's how easy it is to make a very simple flat style iMac icon in Adobe Illustrator from scratch. So from here, I can group all of these together so they always stay together. And then I can scale it up or scale it down if I needed exactly this 512. I can scale it all the way up and then I can export from here. So if you want to save these for web to be used on a website immediately, you can just come over here and go File, Export, Save for Web. From here, you can save whatever file format you need. You can see over here right now, GIF is selected. I can do a JPEG or a transparent ping as well. So that is really how easy it is to create a flat style iMac icon in Illustrator. If you enjoyed this tutorial, please subscribe. I release a new design tutorial every single Tuesday. And don't forget to head on over to my blog, every-tuesday.com for even more design tutorials and a bunch of design freebies. Thanks so much for watching and I will see you next week.